Welcome back to the Coins and Connections podcast, where we explore all things books, business, and bullshit. My favorite bees. I'm your host, the fairy coin mother, Sinquanta Cox-Smith of www.sinquantacoxsmith.com. Now let's get into today's episode. Hey guys, welcome back to the Coins and Connections podcast, season five, episode two. So we're excited to be back on the mic with you guys, and I hope you enjoyed the very first episode. I am just excited about talking about Clubhouse today. If you guys don't know, Clubhouse is an audio drop-in app where it's no faces and all you hear is like talking. There has been a live play of like Lion King and Dream Girls. A lot of exciting things have happened on the platform. I'm still not sure if they have completely opened it up to everyone yet. But when I first got on, it was definitely invite only. Shout out to my girl E who sent me an invite back in November. So I was on the platform back in November, but I'm excited to just go over what I've learned on the platform, what I've gained from the platform, and just to discuss it in a different light. I'm I'm sure there's so many think pieces out there about Clubhouse, but I just want to share my take um, and then just discuss some of the things that I've taken away from it and changed in my business as well. You guys know what time it is. It's time for our rapid fire questions of the day. I have two rapid fire questions of the day. And the first one is what color are you and how does being that color make you feel? I am all shades of purple. It was about 2015 when I fell in love with the color purple. I found like this Revlon lipstick and it was like one of those thick ones and it just was like this beautiful shade and that was it. That's when I fell in love with the color purple. Dark purples, light purples, lavender. I love it all at this point. Before that, I was like a yellow and red type of person. I love those colors. But the purple just brings some calmness to me. It's beautiful because of the different shades and I think I'm just so in love with it. I know that a lot of people say uh, purple means royalty so that's how it makes me feel. It makes me feel royal. The second question of the day is if you chose your age forever what age would you choose and why? I would definitely say it would be my mid-30s probably 32, 33 because I learned so much about myself in those years and now being 34 for six months now (laughs) and on my way to 35, I feel a whole sense of who I am, who I want to be, like where I'm going, the maturity level that I have, just all of the life lessons that I learned. And I think I started to grow into the woman I've always been destined to come in my early 30s. And then as far as my success, it, it really pumped up in my 30s. Like it really, I knew so much more than I did when I, it was in my early 20s, like just spending reckless and not taking things serious and chasing the money instead of just being consistent with what I wanted to do. I really think like my early 30s is what I would stay in. So in that range. Hey guys, today I'm here to talk about Printful. So Printful is an on-demand order fulfillment and warehousing service that fulfills and ships products, including clothing, accessories, and home and living items for online businesses. So if you've been following along on my YouTube channel or here on my podcast, you've heard me talk about print on demand and you heard me talk about Printful. I enjoy Printful and I call it my number one source for print on demand fulfillment and shipping. They're awesome with their customer service and I recommend them to anyone who wants to start shipping products with no startup costs. It's free to use and I love just getting my samples in the mail. I love seeing my customers super excited about the quality of their t-shirts and other items. So if you want to go ahead and join Printful, visit bit.ly backslash Printful CC to sign up. Jumping into the Clubhouse topic, like I said, I joined Clubhouse in November of 2020 and it was like, woo, it was a whirlwind. It was a lot to 
take in uh, i was trying to understand the platform like what do i do here i don't know how long it took me to create my first room but when i like learned about like these clubs and things i was like okay i know i want to do that and i know that i talk a lot about print on demand on my personal IG page on my YouTube channel and then here on the podcast I was like oh I want to do a print on demand success club I was definitely one of the first ones to have a print on demand like club that's what we were talking about print on demand all these websites and fulfillment and things like that and I just started hosting some rooms and I started meeting random people who had the same interests who had questions who had heard of print on demand but didn't understand it and it turned into a lot of Q and A's and then some rooms that I hosted ended up being very good as far as in me meeting other people in the field who had the same experience as me or had more years in the industry as me. And I was able to definitely meet Eden. He is so amazing. We teamed up together to do a lot of things in the club. I welcomed him with open arms basically to be a part of my club and host his own type of rooms as well. And that was really consistent. Like one Once I got the hang of it and once I understand what people wanted to listen to, what type of advice they wanted to, but also I knew that you had to take the platform with a grain of salt. Like when I first started, it wasn't all this hoopla. And then there was like a lot of celebrities started to join and it was just like these rooms. They was raggedy. They was, it it was the ghetto. Like I was like, oh, wow. And then I also realized that people were on there all day and all night. And I was like, so do you not have a job or a family or something else to do? But that started to become the culture. It started to become like a competition. It started to become just ratchet shit all day. I'm not going to call any names, but I was just surprised at some of the conversations that some of the celebrities that I had looked up to were having and it just made me look at them in a different light but then it also went from fun to like business so then I started to see marketing rooms and this and this and this so it really switched from being social and then it went a little ratchet and then it went a little businessy and then it got into the performance part and before that I knew that a lot of people made some really deep connections on the platform before it was like bombarded with an uptick of people. People were closing deals. People were getting sponsors. People were getting seed money. And it was a lot of supporting and really strong networking going on. Not saying that's still not going on, but I think when it was smaller, it was a lot more intimate and people got to know each other versus you may be in the same room all week and you may not see the same person. So that's how big it's gotten. So you can't be every place at once. Like you cannot, it's just so difficult. The biggest thing is that I think I still have the largest print on demand success club on the platform. Um, I think we almost have 2000 club members. I was able to grow my Instagram audience and then grow my audience on the actual platform. So I think I have 1.7 K followers which is, I guess it's it's cool. Um, I wasn't there for the numbers, but I also was able to create like opportunities and work with people outside of the platform. I've been in contact with people at Primfo and just different people who have these big companies and people who are doing like market research and just a lot of different people I've been able to come in contact with. And I've been able to learn so much from some of the people who are in the print on demand industry, but like, doing it themselves like they are the print on demand fulfillment company so grew my audience both on instagram and on youtube and then that in terms basically trickled into my paid stuff like my courses and things like that that has been one of the really good things that has happened as well and i think it was really good for getting me in front of new people because in terms when i had something to say and it was validated and then i had people who started following me in november who came back in december or january and was like saying hey because of you i've been able to make my first sale because of you i was able to create a journal Thank you for telling me about this platform because now this makes my life easier. Or I was looking for this type of product and you mentioned it or you were able to give me a referral to this 
site and now I can create what I want to. So it has been really good in that way just to know that I can continue to spread my knowledge and help other people on the platform. And I think if you are on Clubhouse, you have to bring something different at this point. So like I've taken March off. I didn't host not one room. I did host one early March, just letting people know that, hey, I am closing my calendar for good. There'll be no calls. <laughs> I won't be taking any calls. And this is not the first time I've done this. It's just I'm really good at it, but it takes a lot of energy and time. And it's not something that pays a lot of my bills. Plus, I probably am not charging enough, okay? So just know that for one hour, it's $97. And I probably should be charging more than that. And for 25, 30 minutes, it's like 49 bucks. I also remember that when I first started taking calls, it was free. <laughs> like I would still have a calendar, but it was free. There was a time I was charging people $30 for 60 minutes. And I was like, oh, this is worth more than $30. Like 15 minutes is worth more than $25. I think we all have that issue with undercharging. <laughs> it's just one of those things that you have to truly figure out for yourself. But also figure out what you want to bring to the platform. What is your club about? Also think about how often do you want to host a room? Is it the same type of rooms every week? Like on Mondays, I was doing these like design prompt rooms. I'll have a prompt and we'll design and we'll post it and we'll talk about it and talk about the tools or software we use to create that design and then on thursdays it will be some type of form of education and then on thursdays it will be some type of education i've done a full conversation where i walk everyone through a kdp journal upload <laughs> and then i had people to use that information and go on and create journals and become bestsellers within a week of just going through the prompt with me. I had provided free KDP line sheets, which I also did when I first created my very first journal course. So these are resources that I provide. I provide templates. I provide these courses. Like also, every time you start to open yourself up to new people, there's new people who come to you who know nothing about you. There's also people who watch my YouTube channel and then they decide to purchase with me. And that's, it, it just depends. All of the information is good, but I try my best to create the courses from a beginner standpoint. And I'm not re-recording anything. I'm not updating those courses because I teach from a point where no matter what, the, the information will still be relevant. When I talk about niche research or researching in general and covers, that information is timeless because you're going to always look and research just about the same way. I have been researching the same way since 2017 with my journals and my t-shirts. And I can still find new niches every day, every single day, every single time. So it's just, hey, I know what I'm talking about. Explore that niche. <clears throat> Explore that niche. Today, we're going to be talking about the hiking niche. You know about hiking, people who love to hike. The weather is starting to get warmer, but instead of just talking about everybody hiking, we're going to talk about one state. We're going to talk about hiking in California. What you're going to do is you're going to go to Google and you're going to figure out where are the top places that people go hiking in California? And then you're going to niche down to those sub niches when you find those locations. And then you create your products geared toward those hiking uh, places or those hiking trails. And as far as Clubhouse, it is definitely help me to understand my fear of speech because even though people can't see my face and it's so crazy because I do the podcast and I do my YouTube channel and I don't get nervous at all when it comes time to record those things. I do get out of breath because I'm a little overweight and I'm trying to work on it, but it's nerve wracking when you're in certain rooms because you just don't know how people will perceive you, especially because it's, you can't really... <laughs> 
speak. It's like speaking. It's like when I speak, I'm representing myself and my brand and what I'm standing for. And then also your bio is representing your brand and what you stand for. People have marvelous bios over there. And then if you want to, you can go a step farther as connecting your Instagram and Twitter. And then people, what they do first is they see your name, they look you up, they go look at your Instagram, they click on your links, and that's how they get to know you. What's a connection through clicking? Clicking and talking. So best believe if somebody brings you on stage, they clicking through your bio, they checking your stuff. And if your link is broken, they're like, hey, we want to support you, but your link is broken. Hey, I want to buy from you, but there's something going on with, on with your website. So it's like, you got to show up and present yourself the way you want to be received. And you can't go on here and say, oh, I do this and that. But then when we look at your bio or we look at your Instagram or your profile or your Twitter, but that's not what you're giving. It's not giving what it's supposed to be game. Okay. Okay. Per. All right. So that's like you, you have to show up again and through voice. It is how you show up, show up authentic, transparent, and you'll reach the people you need to reach. And then it's also a platform where you need to just take what you need and leave what you don't, because there is a lot of shady stuff. There's a lot of misinformation given. And I always like to put out the disclaimer, I teach from experience. Just because I have not experienced the same thing you've experienced does not make my information right or wrong. It's just from my experience. So that's a disclaimer we have to give. So when a lot of times we teach, yeah, there's 20 different people saying 20 different things because that's their experience. No, I've never gotten my Redbubble account suspended, but I've gotten a T public account suspended and I don't even know why. But there's a lot of people who got their Redbubble account suspended. I've not had that issue. There's people who get denied for merch consistently. But that's not in my experience. I was approved the first time. And I've been on the platform for a few years now. So everyone's experience is different. There's a lot of times that I can't tell you why your account has been suspended. Why they rejected your design because I've I've not had that experience. But also sometimes we can say, okay, did you put such and such in your keywords or did you do this? Or and a lot of times I think people know why they're rejected and suspended because they know they're living faulty and they're uploading trademarkable <laughs> trademark infringement and things like that. But if you don't care when you go to do it, don't try to like cry wolf. Oh my gosh, I don't know why. Because most of the time people know they have this, you have this inkling feeling when something is wrong. When you're doing something that isn't, and it should be easy for you to understand that. But again, people will try to try it. And that's not my fault when you decide to try it and then you get stopped. But you can't blame someone else for that because, like I said, a lot of times you want something that's wrong. So, again, my experience has been pretty good on Clubhouse. If you're already on Clubhouse, make sure you follow me at Cinquanta. In my bio, if you go to the very first club in my profile, you'll find a little purple POD, Print On Demand Success Club. Make sure you join it. I have 500 and something followers that I'm waiting to add to the club. I have to do them in sections because it's a lot and it will stop me from trying to upload, like add everyone as a member in one day. So make sure you follow me over there. Also, I do a lot of little different things on my Instagram. So if you're not familiar with my Instagram, it's at Cinquanta Cox Smith. And of course, please keep tuning into my YouTube channel. It's Cinquanta Cox Smith. And I have so many videos coming, some un unboxings from different print on demand companies. I have some reviews and showing you how to create accounts on new newer platforms that I have not discussed. And I'm just so excited about continuing to share uh, my experience with these websites and showing you that I'm not perfect. We all grow through the same thing and we are going to grow together. So I am in the scaling part of my print on demand businesses. I'm doing really well with Etsy. I'm doing really well with Etsy Plus Printful and my Amazon merch is doing amazing. So now I'm in the I'm in this space where I'm scaling those business to be huge. So I'm excited to talk about that more and how I am changing my Queens of Connections business over to a print on demand only type platform or business model. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this information about Clubhouse and just learning a little bit more about how you should use it and how you should approach the platform. 
This segment is called Q Money Bags Thought of the Week. Q Money Bags Thought of the Week. Talk about QuickBooks and taxes because it's April when we usually have the deadline, but I think it has been like pushed back or something. The tax season has been crazy this year with the pandemic, new bills and things being signed, unemployment taxes being reversed. So people are getting to actually keep that and stimulus payments, just so many things that are going on right now. And this is not an ad, but if I have an affiliate link, I would definitely uh, put it out here because QuickBooks has saved my life for the past two years because I have all my transactions going to there. And I had experience with QuickBooks when I used to work with my aunt and uncle. And I have been able to keep that knowledge and be able to reconcile my books and just put things where they need to be. And doing it monthly really helps because you can actually remember what why you spent that money and then the reasons why you go through certain things. I love QuickBooks because at the end of the year, what it does is it helps me to categorize all my things, my fees, my taxes, all of my deductions in one place. Even like my office size and my mileage and things like that. It really helps me to have things situated gives me a really great summary at the end of the year where I can just take those numbers and plug and play into my taxes. Now note that if you don't have experience with taxes, accounting or anything like this, I don't recommend you doing your own taxes. I did used to work with H&R Block. I do have experience with doing Schedule Cs. I've been doing my dad's taxes for probably the last 10 years at this point. I had a really good teacher at H&R Block who was able to help me uh, understand a whole lot of things. So I always try to keep up to date with like tax knowledge and things like that. So it is helpful to me because I have that background. I can understand the language. I still have, I probably still have my tax books. And then I also understand how QuickBooks works and I understand what are fees, material, shipping, what is a deduction, what can you deduct? I do understand all of this language and different things that a lot of normal people don't know or understand. I am able to do my own taxes, reconcile my books, understand what these charts and things mean. But if you don't, I recommend you hiring someone or going to professionals. That is my spill on that. But QuickBooks has saved my life. The QuickBooks, I think I have QuickBooks online or QuickBooks self-employed. But like I said, if I can get an affiliate link, best believe it's going to be down there because it definitely helped me to see where my money went and it made it easier for me to file my taxes this year. So I hope that is like a bit of hope for anyone who is still not filing taxes yet or just some hope of being organized a little bit better because you can also do it yourself and then have your accountant access it and reconcile it for you um, as well. And y'all can communicate that way. Many different options with that. And I'm still using Gusto for HR and like for hiring and, and payroll and stuff like that. That has helped me to file like my unemployment stuff in Texas and switch over to South Carolina for other things. So it's definitely good to have some type of software to keep you on the straight and narrow and it will help me when my company becomes bigger and then I have to hire more people I have some consistency showing and it's just not they don't have to backlog months and years of paperwork everything is basically digital and they can see it see what I've done and they can take it from there QuickBooks is the way to go for your taxes guys and I hope you enjoyed this Q Money Bag Stock of the Week and until next time <laughs> Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to the Coins and Connections podcast. Don't forget to leave a review and join the conversation over on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag Coins and Connections. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Cinquanta Cox Smith and at Coins and Connections. You can shop all merch at www.coinsandconnections.com. I love you more than I love this podcast. Peace.